Hi, I'm NASA Public Affairs Officer Brandy Dean here at Lockheed Martin's Exploration Development Lab in Houston, Texas. And behind me we have a mock-up of Orion, the new spacecraft that NASA's building to take humans farther into space than we've ever gone before. We're here today to give you the latest update on NASA's Exploration Design Challenge. More than 125,000 students from 81 countries around the world have joined this challenge to become part of Orion's first space flight this year. Today we've got exciting news for the U.S. high school teams that submitted designs for radiation shield experiments for Orion's flight. We're going to be announcing the top five teams that will advance to the next level of the challenge. To share the news with you, I have two space flight experts here with me today. <laughs> NASA astronaut Rex Walheim serves as the Orion program astronaut representative and will tell you how the astronauts will work and live on board the Orion spacecraft. And Heather McKay <laughs> is an Orion engineer for Lockheed Martin. Yes, she is actually a rocket scientist and has been involved in the design and build of the spacecraft for the past several years. Now I'm going to turn it over to them to tell you a little more about Orion and introduce our five finalist teams. Hi everyone, I'm Heather McKay and I'm excited to be a part of the team building the Orion spacecraft. Over 3,000 people across America helped to build NASA's new spacecraft that will carry astronauts far beyond our moon. All of their work is coming together at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Much like this broadcast, our team works virtually and in person to build a spacecraft. NASA has partnered with Lockheed Martin and the National Institute of Aerospace to give students like you an opportunity to become part of Orion's first flight through the Exploration De Design Challenge. Our team agreed that radiation shielding would be the best challenge for Orion's first space flight because the spacecraft will travel through the Van Allen Belt, a large, intense radiation field in space that could be very harmful to humans. Designing new ways to shield humans from radiation during spaceflight is critical to deep space missions beyond the moon as we venture out to explore asteroids and eventually Mars. Rex, can you tell us a little more about the Orion spacecraft and explain why radiation is so important for us to study when planning our missions? Sure, Heather. I can tell you firsthand that building a spacecraft for deep space missions is an extremely challenging and difficult task. It takes a great team Thank to you. develop the systems <laughs> to make sure that we can have a safe mission. First let me tell you a little bit about the spacecraft. Orion is really actually made up of three major parts. The crew module, the service module, and the launch abort system. The crew module, which I'm in here, is uh, what keeps the astronauts uh, because of the living quarters and the place where we do our work during the mission. And it's about the size, oh, of a, uh, a bathroom, master bathroom in a house. So it's not a lot of volume, so you really have to like your crew members because you're going to be in a combined space with them for weeks or maybe even months. Now below the crew module sits the service module. This is what we call the powerhouse for the, uh, for the crew module. The service module has our propulsion, our power, and our life support systems. It stays attached to the crew module for the whole mission until just before we enter, we re-enter, and then it separates, and we come home in just the crew module. Finally, the launch abort system, which is the system I worked on most. It sits atop the Orion crew module and operates using three solid rocket motors to propel the crew module to safety in the event of an emergency on a launch pad or during initial ascent. The powerful abort motor fires 500,000 pounds of thrust, going from zero to nearly 500 miles per hour in a matter of seconds. All of these parts are coming together now at Kennedy Space Center as we get ready for Orion's first space flight called Exploration Flight Test 1, which launches later this year. During Exploration Flight Test 1, Orion will make two orbits around the Earth to reach a high altitude orbit of 3,600 miles above the Earth, traveling a total mission distance of 60,000 statute miles in only four hours. This is when the student experiment on board will be put to the test to see if it, the radiation shield protects the sensors inside, called a dosimeter, from being blasted with radiation as Orion travels through the Van Allen radiation belts. Gaining speed and momentum on the second orbit, Orion will return to Earth at nearly 20,000 miles per hour. At this speed, Orion's heat shield will have to shed nearly 4,000 degrees of heat generated from the friction of the spacecraft moving through the Earth's atmosphere. As Orion reaches a safe altitude, the parachutes will deploy and the spacecraft gently splashes down in the Pacific Ocean. This is a very exciting mission for NASA, and we are honored to have all of you as part of our virtual crew on this flight mm -hmm. test. Congratulations to all 46 teams that submitted experiment designs. This was a very difficult challenge, and all of you should be very proud of your work. All students who participated in Phase 1 and Phase 2 of the challenge 
will have their names flown on Orion during Exploration Flight Test 1, making them a part of NASA's next historic step in space exploration. Now for the moment we've all been waiting for. Heather and I will announce the five top finalists. Note that these are not in any particular order. Congratulations are in order for Team Aries from the Governor's School of Science and Technology in Hampton, Virginia. This five-member team was sponsored by Mr. Gregory House. The Governor's School is owned and operated by six Peninsula School Divisions. Gloucester, Hampton, Newport News, Pocosson, Williamsburg, James City County, and York. Students who attend the Governor's School go to classes there in the morning and return to their home's high school for coursework in the afternoon. This team worked well together at school and virtually in order to complete their project on time. Congratulations to Abba, Anna, Christopher, Danny, Sajan on a job well done. Our next team is Titan Shielding Systems from the Illinois Mathematics and Science Academy in Aurora, Illinois. Sponsored by Mr. Eric Hawker, this team had six members. Congratulations, Seth, Virginia. A residential high school for 650 qualified students from across the state of Illinois. The school by requiring that the makeup of the student body is yeah. an ethnic representation of the Virginia. State. Students are accepted into the program as 10th graders and live in residential halls during the school year. Team Titan members actually come from the cities of Freeport, Yorkville, Highland Park, Crystal Lake, Woodbridge, and Glen Ellen, Illinois. Congratulations to the Team Titan members, Alec, Alonzo, Cassandra, Claire, Michael, and Ryan. Well, you ready for another, another school? Can't wait. All the way from Utah is Team Aegis from Harriman High School in Harriman, Utah. Congratulations. This two-person team was sponsored by Mr. Matthew Lund. Harriman High School is a public school serving over 2,100 students from the cities of Harriman, South Jordan, and Riverton. Harriman is south of Salt Lake City and is a site where some Utah home builders decided to bring movie magic to life by building an exact replica of the house from the Disney movie <laughs> Up, just to remind people that adventure is out there, an appropriate model for this EDC finalist team. Congratulations to Matthew and Christian. Moving back to the Midwest, we have Team Erion from Erie High School POP Physics in Erie, Kansas. Sponsored by Miss Virginia Wolken, this all-girls team includes Ashlyn, Lorena, Madison, and Sabrina. Erie High is part of a unified school district that serves 544 students in pre-K through 12th grades. Kansas, this district serves students who live in a 450 square mile region around the school. Erie is the first green school in Kansas, and its student-led green team helps promote environmentally friendly practices for the school and the community. Congratulations to Team Erion. And finally, from my home state of California, <laughs> Team Laura from Summit View School Chemistry class in North Hollywood, California. Congratulations. This four-person team was sponsored by Mrs. Carol Cow. Summit View is a unique school that individualizes college prep curriculum for students with significant learning challenges. Small class size and high teacher to student ratio enables Summit View students to identify their potential and experience academic success. The school is located in the San Fernando Valley, just outside Los Angeles. This community is famous for a half mile long California history mural painted on the side of a flood control channel. Congratulations to Cameron, Ethan, Greg, and Tyson. And those are the five schools selected by evaluation team for NASA Exploration Design Challenge. Congratulations to all of you. Wow, Rex, we have some really rad teams. That's true. <laughs> now, each team will be assigned a mentor from NASA Langley Research Center. With the help of their mentors, the team's designs will be refined and uploaded into Alteris, the online tool for the assessment of radiation in space. This set of integrated simulation tools is used by NASA scientists and engineers to study the effects of space radiation on shielding materials, electronics, and biological systems. The results of this testing will help the NASA and Lockheed Martin team evaluate the effectiveness of each design. After the Alteris results are tabulated, one of these high school teams will be deemed the winner, earning an honor to go to NASA Kennedy Space Center and watch their payload blast off into space as Orion launches on Exploration Flight Test 1 from Cape Canaveral Air Force Base in Florida. We want to wish, e wish each team the best of luck as they begin the testing phase of this challenge. And again, congratulations to our five teams for a job well done. 
You can add your own congratulations to these teams by sending them a Twitter message at hashtag RadShield. That's hashtag R-A-D-S-H-I-E-L-D. The announcement of the team earning the honor to fly their experiment and attend the inaugural launch of Orion will be made on April 25th at the opening of the U.S. Science and Engineering Festival in Washington, D.C. So watch for that exciting announcement coming up soon. Meanwhile, remember that students around the world can still participate in Phase 1 of the Exploration Design Challenge. Just log on to the website at www.nasa.gov forward slash education forward slash EDC. Complete the suggested activities and submit your names before June 30th to join the honorary crew for Orion's first flight. Thank you for joining us today, and again, congratulations to all the design teams. Way to go. <laughs>